Nation. From OAKLA to LP, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Today's rumors are presented by Magic Spoon. These guys didn't only create healthy cereal, they perfected it. Think about this, 13 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and only 140 calories per bowl, and you can save $5 off your very first order. Dude, it's super simple. All you got to do, magicspoon.com slash Raiders. All right, y'all, let's get into the first story here. Derek Carr, is he recruiting Devontae Adams? How many Chucky heads is this one? It's right here. This one's for Chucky heads. Believe it, baby. As soon as I saw this when I woke up this morning, I was like, okay, DC, I see you getting down. So if you guys don't know yet, Carr basically says that he would do whatever it takes to get Devontae Adams to Las Vegas once he becomes a free agent in 2022. He still has one year left on his contract worth about $13.78 million. I'm a believer he's going to get a hefty deal. We'll get into some of those contract details later, but for those of you that don't know, Adams and Carr, they're boys. Like, they hang out in the offseason. They played college football together at Fresno State. And guess what? Devontae Adams is one hell of a receiver. So here's exactly what our quarterback had to say on getting Adams to Las Vegas. I've learned in this business you never shut a door on anything. I know that he's obviously the best receiver. Everyone says one of the best He's the best receiver in the NFL. The guy is unbelievable. He's been on one of my best friends since we were in college together. I love the guy. I would always welcome playing with him again. I think it would unlock some things in both of us that people haven't seen yet. And I'm always open to that. And I will be recruiting very hard. So when that time comes, it will be a full court press. Oh, man, a full court press on trying to get Devontae Adams. I can already see the amount of videos that I'm going to be making in the future, and it looks really, really good here. So the fact that Carr wants to go out and get him absolutely makes sense. But for those of you that don't under, understand this, the type of chemistry that these guys have, I mean, look at these numbers from Devontae Adams and his two years with Derek Carr in college at Fresno State. 13 games in 2012, 100 grabs, 1,312 yards, 14 touchdowns. That's pretty good, right? Well, what about the following year in 2013? If we can get that type of production next season, dude, I'm all over it. In 13 games, 131 grabs, 1,719 yards, and then, wow, 24 touchdowns. I mean, you're talking about 38 touchdowns in two years. Sign me up for that. But what did Derek Carr do in those two seasons? 67.3% completion percentage, 37 tutties, seven interceptions, and then a little cherry on top the very next season. 68.9 completion percentage, 5,083 yards, 50 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. Obviously, I'm not saying that Carr is going to put up that type of production, but you know what? Some of my best friends that I've ever had are the guys that I met in college, and I believe that Derek Carr and Devontae Adams, they're best friends from all the time they've been together, which is going to help your on-field performance. It's also going to help your chemistry. It's going to help this football team win some games. So here's the question that I'm going to ask everyone here. Would you want the Raiders to sign Devontae Adams? Why for yes and for no? Obviously, I'm not talking about this offseason because he still has one year left on his deal with the Green Bay Packers. But what happens if everything goes south in Green Bay? What happens if Aaron Rodgers isn't there anymore? Maybe he doesn't want to go back. Like, there's a lot of different things going on here with Devontae Adams. And in terms of why for yes or and for no, I mean, of, of course, you want Devontae Adams on your team. I know Carr said he's the best in the league. There's a lot of really talented guys, but he's no doubt top five. You can make the arguments for, like, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Tyree. Like, you can make the argument for a lot of people out there. But not many people are, and if they do have Devontae Adams out there top five, well, then you shouldn't be listening to him in the first place. Now, here's the issue, though. If you do go out and get him, the other thing you need to think about is, like, what does that mean for Ruggs and Edwards? Because, like, if, if Ruggs and Edwards totally break out, then I don't really know if it makes sense to go out and get Devontae Adams. Not that he's not great, but if Ruggs has an 1,000-yard season, let's say Brian Edwards also has a 1,000-yard season, do you really want to invest all that money into going out and get Devontae Adams when you're two younger guys? They absolutely balled out. The only way you literally go out and get Adams is if either 11 or 89, so either Ruggs, or Brian Edwards end up busting because if both of those guys play well, you don't need another wide receiver. If both of those guys struggle or one of those guys struggle and then you need another guy in the future, then yes, that's when it makes sense to go out and get Devontae Adams. 
And speaking of cents, I can save you guys a lot of cents. And trying to think of how many cents is in $5, I'm terrible at math. But you can save $5 off your very first order if you go to magicspoon.com slash Raiders. Today's show is presented by them. If you're looking to stay in a little bit of better shape and still be able to eat whatever the heck you want, still be able to have that sweet tooth, Magic Spoon created healthy cereal that's going to remind you of all the awesome cereal that you had growing up as a kid. I don't know about you, man. When I was like 13, covered in pimples, had a beer belly already. I don't even know how that's possible, but it's because I ate junk. Now, thanks to Magic Spoon, I can eat cereal, and I can eat as almost as much as I want because it's only 140 calories per bowl. But I have people ask me a lot of times, well, Mitch, like, what kind of flavors do they have? Or, like, what's the variety of cereal? Well, here's what they got. If you want to go ahead and order a variety box, you can actually get four boxes for $35 because it's $5 off your very first order. If you want fruity, tastes just like Fruit Loops, peanut butter, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, seriously, cocoa, cocoa pebbles. And if you like those type of cereals, I actually did cocoa and peanut butter the other day, and it was just absolutely incredible. There's cinnamon, if you're a big fan of cin cinnamon toast crunch, frosted, Frosted Flakes, and then Blueberry. I can't remember. It was like the, the Blueberry Captain Crunch. You know what I'm talking about? Crunch Berry, I think this was the name. That's what it reminds me of. These cereals almost taste too good to be true, so I promise you it's magicspoon.com slash Raiders. You got to go ahead and check it out. Now, they are sponsoring today's show, so I want to show them how Raider Nation gets down here. We're doing a competition at Chat Sports, so if you could, please go to my latest Instagram post, okay? It's literally me. I'm like chugging a box of cereal. I want you to comment Raiders, comment Raider Nation for life. If you want to spam Raiders 100 times, Go for it. And if you want to go ahead and tag at Magic Spoon Cereal, I'm going to take some of the comments. I'm going to take some of those people, and I'm going to give you some shout-outs coming up here on the Raiders Report. All right, let's continue to talk about Devontae Adams because I'm telling you what. This guy, he's been feasting on Magic Spoon Cereal. That's why he's putting up these ridiculous numbers. 18 touchdowns last season. That's laughable. And it was only in 14 games. But the fact of when this guy's been able to stay healthy and he's been able to play – basically over 14 games, he's putting up double-digit touchdown numbers. I mean, it's just absolutely insane to me. And then from his entire career standpoint, sure, he's had Aaron Rodgers, but he's also been able to make Aaron Rodgers look very good as well. 546 grabs, 6,568 yards, 62 touchdowns. This is actually in 100 career games, 93 starts. But the other question about going out and getting Devontae Adams is this. How much... Would you pay Adams? And you know what? <clears throat> I actually think this is such a good question. I'm going to make it the pinned comment on today's video. So I want you to go on down in the comment section. You're going to get hit with the YouTube ad break. While that ad is playing, let me know how much you think Adams is going to get paid per season. Well, first, before we dive into how much I think that Adams is going to get paid per season and his overall contract, here are the highest paid wide receivers per year. Now, DeAndre Hopkins, he got a two-year extension. That's why his number is a little bit higher. Julio Jones got a three-year extension. That was 22 mil. Keenan Allen ended up getting a four-year extension, which was basically worth 20.25. Amari Cooper, he signed a five-year deal. And Michael Thomas signed a five-year deal over worth all over 100 mil. So when I thought about the potential deal for Adams, I'm like, all right, he's finishing up the final year of his contract, <clears throat> which means he's probably going to sign a five-year deal like most receivers do, especially with him trying to make his last big payday. I'm going to go with $115 million. That's an average of 23 mil, so he's going to make more than Julio Jones, less than DeAndre Hopkins. And in terms of guaranteed dollars, these receivers have been getting somewhere between 60% of their overall total in guaranteed money. And luckily for Devontae Adams, it's a really nice amount, $69 million guaranteed. All right, the next story coming up here on the Raiders Report is around trading Cleveland Furl. And how many Chucky heads is this one trading Clee? This one, zero Chucky heads. Tuck rule, tuck that. If you're new to the show, you don't know what this means. This rumor up here means I think it's 100% chance of it happening. This one means I don't think it's happening at all. So Bleach Report, they released an article. One player every team should try to trade before the season starts. Anytime I see an article like this, I'm like, all right, control F, search for the Raiders. Who are they going with? Well, they picked Cleve. So Cleve was drafted number four overall in the 2019 NFL Draft. That was the draft. The Raiders had three first-round picks. Furl at four, Jacobs at 24, Jonathan Abram at 27. Here's the reason why they decided to go with Furl, and I'm going to give you my two cents on every quote that you guys are about to see on screen. So here's Bleach Report on trade and Furl. 
Might someone else want to try to see if they can get something out of Cleveland Furl? The Las Vegas Raiders might not be willing to admit that they erred in drafting the edge defender fourth overall in 2019, but he's been an utter disappointment, and now it looks like the Raiders are set with Yannick Ngakwe and Max Crosby on the edge. So in terms of, like, overall, like, yes, he has been disappointing for the simple fact of this. If you draft somebody in the top four, that's obviously going to be a little bit of a disappointment. However, I don't think that he's been a total boss. Like, that's not really fair to say to Klee because for those of you that actually watch the Raiders, know that he's actually coming off a halfway decent season. So, like, look at these numbers here from 2020. I mean, you're talking about a guy who played in 455 snaps at an overall grade of 76.1, run defense grade 76.6, Pass rush grade, 70.0. I get that he battled some injuries, but if we're giving all these other players excuses simply because like of COVID or a weird training camp, why can't we give Clee a little bit of a you know a break as well? So how about this? Like, and I understand PFF isn't the all end or end all be all, whatever the hell you want to say, but a 76.1 grade, that was 16th best among all edge rushers in the NFL last year. I understand that Max has the sacks, right? And Gakwe is a great player, too. I'm not trying to take that away from them. I do think Crosby's a better player, and I do think that Gakwe's a better player. However, Furl was the best defensive lineman last season for the Las Vegas Raiders. It's really as simple as that. He didn't put up the big sack numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, but he was a great inside defender and the fact that he was able to play inside and outside can we put some respect on his name because all I'm seeing here from Bleach Report is utter disrespect here's the other part of the quote from Bleach Report they're paying big bucks to the veteran Gakwe while Crosby is coming off 17 sacks in his first two NFL seasons Furl meanwhile <clears throat> has just six and a half sacks in 26 starts it's time to stop letting him uh, stop letting him start, and with Carl Nassib and rookie day two selection Malcolm Coons also on the roster, it might simply be time to move on. So the first thing off, after reading that paragraph, what I gathered is this. Whoever wrote this article for Beach Report, his name is Brad Gagnon. You, you know... Zero. Did I get it back? I Hopefully I did. You know zero about the Las Vegas Raiders. Because to say everything that you did in that quote, it makes absolutely no sense. To say that you overpaid or you're paying a lot for Gakwe, that's simply not true. I wouldn't make an argument. It's a top 10 contract of this offseason. You're paying them two years, 26 mil. Do you see some of the other deals out there for premier edge rushers? Because this is a guy who's had eight sacks every single year, and he's only 26 years old. To say that the Raiders are overpaying him, that's crazy to me. And then to say that Nassib and Koontz deserve more time, that might even be more crazy. Not that Koontz doesn't deserve it, and not that Carl Nassib didn't have 464 snaps last season, but to say that Nassib and Koontz right now are better than Cleveland Furl, I mean, how do you tell me you don't, you know nothing about the Raiders without actually telling me you know nothing about the Raiders? It's listening to that article that Bleacher Report did out. That's how you do it. So you guys can make the call here because I know I've talked about this a few times on the show. If you could trade one player on the Raiders, who would it be? Go down to the comments section and let me know. I'm genuinely curious of what you guys have to say. For me, I, I don't even want to put Klee on this list because I wouldn't trade Cleveland Furl because you're not going to get what you invested in him, and he's actually been a lot better than what boneheads from Bleach Report are starting to say. In terms of five other players, here are five other players that I would trade right now instead of Cleveland Furl. Carl Nassib, simply because if I can save money on his contract, you're absolutely going to do it. And if, by trading Nassib and Richard, you save that money. Damon Arnett, the Raiders have already made him an afterthought. I don't want him on the team. Nevin Lawson, maybe one of the reasons why he's getting hyped up is because the Raiders are trying to trade him. And then Tanner Muse, I like the war daddy, the special teams war daddy, but I'm not trying to draft somebody in the third round. If I can get a fifth or a sixth round pick from Muse, I take it in a heartbeat. Now, if you guys haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the Raiders Report. I'm trying to get to 80 thousand subs i don't know why but youtube just deleted a whole bunch of subscribers from like a whole bunch of different channels and i checked out my numbers i'm like damn i just lost a whole bunch of subs so if you could please help me get to 80,000 subs we're keeping you guys up to date the entire off season we're the number one raiders show uh for a reason but i can't wait because we're almost in july 
And this is when the season really starts to amp up and get pretty fun here. So if you could, please go ahead and subscribe. The next story coming up here on the Raiders Report is around Carl Joseph starting over Jonathan Abram. This one's only one chalky head. It's a small shred of truth, and I actually can't give it zero chalky heads. And when I first saw the story, I was like, no way this is going to happen. And then I was like, all right, let me hear what Brad Weiss has to say. So basically, the legitimacy of his article is, Going on the fact of Abram is entering his third year in the NFL, we know that he's definitely had his ups and downs. The Raiders, they signed Carl Joseph this offseason, and Weiss believes if KJ plays well during training camp and Abram continues to struggle and show that he's not really making improvements off the field as well, that maybe you could see Gruden go with Carl Joseph, who, let's face it, in 2019, Joseph, he played really well for the Raiders. I actually made the argument probably one of the better secondary players there. So here's what Weiss had to say on Joseph starting over Abram. If Abram looks lost in the summer and fails to impress during the preseason, there's no reason why Gruden won't make the move to Joseph. Cujo played well <clears throat> under Gruden before leaving for Cleveland, and for a head coach looking to finally get back to the playoffs, he's going to play the guys who put him in the best position to win. That was Brad Weiss on Joseph starting over Abram. Now, at first, it's Abram's job to lose, and I put him on one of my hot seat videos. I said that if he can't get it done this year, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to get it done because the Gus Bradley system is perfectly made for Jonathan Abram's skill set, being able to get up in the box and get after the quarterback, get after the running game. But if you do want to talk about how these players played just last season, I mean, this is what Jonathan Abram did. This is what Carl Joseph did. <clears throat> so an 856 snaps for Abram versus 660 for Joseph. Overall grade favors Joseph. Run defense grade favors Joseph. Pass rush favors Abram. Coverage grade favors Carl Joseph. So what I'm going to ask you all is this. Who's the better player? But I want you to think of it as the better player and Gus Bradley's system because, let's face it, that's what's actually important here. I want who you all think is the better safety playing up in the box, playing close to the line of scrimmage. If you think it's Jonathan Abram, I want you to type J. If you think it's Carl Joseph, I want you to type K. As much as I love Joseph, I'm going to go with Abram. He is the better fit in Bradley's system, and I know that he's not a good cover safety. Luckily, he ain't going to have to do that. And all those people out there that love Jamal Adams, I'm starting to think that they're going to love to see what somebody like Jonathan Abram is going to do, being close to the box, playing in the right scheme, something that's not super confusing. That's why I'm going to go ahead and type my J for Jonathan.